A shooting at a popular nightclub leaves one dead. And wristbands don't stop students from taking the plunge into Mirror Lake. Those stories and more here on Buckeye News Now. I'm Al Spakani. And I'm Asia Gore. You're watching Buckeye News Now. Shortly after the popular campus bar Charlie Bear moves off campus, gunfire breaks out at the new location. Alexandria Chapin has the details and this week's top story. Monday morning around 2 a.m., shots were fired at this nightclub that recently moved off Ohio State campus. The officer involved shooting resulted in one death. An argument started inside this club on Monday night, and according to police, that argument resulted in the death of 22-year-old Jonathan Rogers. Only minutes earlier, Rogers said he was going out to his car to get a gun, and shortly after that, he shot at another man coming out of the bar. But it was Rogers himself who was hit by police gunfire. Two officers were near the plaza and witnessed the incident. They then shot the gunman, according to a Columbus press release, and those officers struck the man. Rogers was pronounced dead by 2.12 a.m. No other injuries have been reported, and police are still searching for the man who was shot at by Rogers. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Alexandria Chapin. The annual Beat Michigan Jump into, into the Lake rallied thousands of students last week, despite the implementation of wristbands. A spokesperson for Ohio State Media Relations said that about 12 people were treated for minor injuries sustained from the jump and four arrests for disorderly conduct. Asia Gore was at the jump and dodged some of the jumpers herself. I'll take a shower or maybe sit on the heater. You might feel that way too if you jumped into the icy waters of Mirror Lake, but a chilly 30 degree night didn't stop students from plunging into the annual Beat Michigan tradition. It's really cold. Uh, it was nice because we get to just join the tradition and it's really cold. No doubt about that, but a university estimated 10 to 12,000 jumpers stormed the lake anyways. But how long does it really take in the water to give the Buckeyes good luck? Not very long, maybe like five seconds. And as the clock struck midnight, wristband wearers continued to flood in. It's crazy, and it's, it's, it's exciting to see how excited they are, but we're here to make sure you know, they're safe and have fun, but are safe at the end. Safety is an obvious concern for an event such as this, but no major incidents have been reported at this time. A spokesperson for Student Life, Dave Isaacs, called this night one of the fun ones, where the tradition wasn't drained by out-of-control behavior or serious threats to student safety. Exactly, and more than I would expect. It was amazing, and I'm going to do it every year. For Buckeye TV, I'm Asia Gore. Splashing in Mirror Lake is just a memory now as the university drained the lake just days after the annual jump. Our news partners at The Lantern report that the draining of the campus icon is to help with cleanup efforts and to clear the area for sustainability study. The research firm Edge Group will reportedly receive $24,000 from the university to do the studies. These studies will focus on the Mirror Lake leak and other maintenance issues. The study is expected to return its recommendations in early 2014, but no word yet as to its expected reopening. A new bill could make paying for pricey textbooks a thing of the past. Called the Affordable College Textbook Act, the bill would create a grant program for universities to expand their use of online textbooks. Senators Dick Durbin of Illinois and Al Franken of Minnesota introduced this new legislation to Congress in November. In addition to expanding online textbooks, that act would ensure that all online textbooks would be available with free access to the public. The newly appointed Federal Communications Commissioner Chairman and OSU alumnus Tom Wheeler returned to campus to deliver his first official address. Alice Bacani has this story. I wanted to give these remarks in Columbus, not only because of my deep affection for this place, but because I think the dateline of my first speech sends a more powerful message than anything that you'll find in the transcript. The OSU alumnus returned to his roots to discuss what people should expect with what he calls the Fourth Great Network Revolution. Each of the preceding revolutions forever changed the world. We should not, therefore, be surprised 
when today's network revolution hurls new realities at us with an ever-increasing velocity. Wheeler stressed the importance of competitive markets in this new age of technology. Competition is a power unto itself that must be encouraged. Competitive markets produce better outcomes than regulated or uncompetitive markets. We must protect competition where it exists. We must promote competition where it may not be fulsome. The FCC chairman used Ohio State as an example of how transforming this network revolution can be. Here at Ohio State, there was a dramatic example of how new networks are changing old practices. When Dr. Dr. Christopher Keating donned Google Glass to conduct a surgical operation that allowed medical students located miles away to see through his eyes. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Alice Bacani. Libraries are becoming the new campus hotspots as students are switching into exam mode. And other students are switching into drunk mode on their phones. Stay tuned. A foundation in honor of the late Ohio State student Maria Tiberi was founded to provide scholarships and increase defensive driver's education. Maria Tiberi was a graphics design major who was killed earlier this year in a car accident. St. Bridget of Kildare Church established the scholarship in Maria's honor for students who want to study in the media and graphic art fields. Well, what we wanted to do was continue on my sister's legacy. I don't if if you didn't know her, but it, um, for those who did know her, she just brought so much light to everybody's day, and. We are doing what we think that she would want to be done. You know, we could be sitting around and doing nothing, but why not learn from what has happened? And we're going to take this experience and make the best of it and just continue to move on forward and help others to, you know, learn to be better drivers, really. Mm -hmm. Ohio State will pull in $18.5 million after extending its contract with Nike, according to an OSU spokesman. OSU and Nike signed three separate seven-year contracts that went into effect in August of 2011. All three are extended until July of 2018. The contracts include a standard license agreement, an equipment supply agreement, and an appearance and consultation agreement. Over the original seven-year period, Ohio State made over $27 million. There's no escaping it, exams are upon us. That's evidenced by the increased population of students in the campus libraries, the longer lines at the area coffee shops, and puppy sightings in some unusual locations. Asia Gore is sharing her notes on this semester's reading day. My biggest exam is microeconomics, and I'm feeling terrible about it right now. Regardless of what you're studying for, chances are you can relate to this concern. The weight of finals can really start to get heavy, but some university-sponsored study breaks may help to lighten the load. This relief comes in many different forms, board games, free catered lunch, and even a chance to shake off some finals week stress with some playful pups. And students aren't the only ones submersing in studies. The Office of Student Life is doing research of their own to see what kind of support students really need. We use a lot of research about study skills and what students need to be successful. Um, and we also use our own research of what events people are going to go to. So food, definitely students have to eat at some point. So we love providing as much food as we can to keep them nourished and to help them be healthy as they're eating. Um, I live for weeks like this. When you get all your free things, you get to relax the most. They go play with the dogs in our pack. Or you can just actually sit down and have a brunch with people you've never met. I met some cool people so far, so I like it. And whether you're multitasking or just taking it one study session at a time, it's important not to forget about your health. The Office of Counseling and Consultation Services is just one of many resources available to students, but students and campus leaders agree that success starts with the basics. Making sure that you are eating healthy, making sure you're getting enough sleep. Um, pulling an all-nighter is not healthy, actually, although it might make you feel like you're getting work done. Your mind is not ready and not able to uh, be prepared for studying and for exams as much as you would like it to. Always get six hours of sleep, never anything less. Try to study early in the day so that if I need to get something done, it's not like in the middle of the night and I'm freaking out and I like to get a lot of sleep. For Buckeye TV, I'm Asia Gore. Are you the friend who scrolls through your contact list at 3 a.m. only to regret it at 10 a.m. the next morning? Well, now you never have to drunk dial again. When you go into drunk mode, so can your phone, thanks to a new app. 
Alexandra Chapin bar hops for this next story. Thank you. Before I down this next drink, I better download a new app. An application for students created by students launched at OSU. The days of waking up to text messages or phone calls you didn't know you sent could be over. Drunk Mode was created by two students from the University of Virginia. The app allows you to select numbers from your contact list that will be temporarily deleted for as long as you set the timer. The application also allows users to set alarms to go off to remind users not to engage in drunk behaviors like driving or late night eating. I think that's awful, but and awful in the sense that we have to have like, reminders to tell us, oh, you're drunk, don't drive. But uh, I guess it's good because, but I don't know who would actually, even if you're drunk, I don't know if someone's actually going to listen to it. Because, you know, when you're drunk, you're not really thinking straight. You're drunk. You're not, that's the intent, but I don't know. That's so sad, though. Oh, my God. I thought it was a really clever idea. I probably will download it. I've never done anything like that, but I have had friends that do it. And I think it's a great way to like prevent anything bad from happening because it's not just for exes, it's also for like, if you call your mom like that, it's not a good idea, but I think it's a, it's a good idea and everybody should have it. What's the price for assuring you won't drunk dial ever again? 99 cents in the iPhone and Android app store. There are similar apps that are free that can help you stay safer after a few drinks, even apps that can call you a ride home. Drunk mode won't prevent you from beer goggles, but it could help you party safer and smarter. Reporting for Buckeye TV, I'm Alexandria Chapin. Braxton Miller makes the Sports Illustrated cover for the third time in his career with the Buckeyes. The junior quarterback is featured in the December issue after the Buckeyes' thrilling win against Michigan on Saturday. Miller also appeared on the cover of the August 2013 issue. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Buckeyes' win over the Wolverines. And we'll have a look at your weekly weather forecast. Stay tuned. We're joined now by our sports director, Franz Rost. Thanks for being with us, Franz. Thanks, Alice and Asia. Last Saturday, number three Ohio State traveled to that state up north to face off against their fierce rivals, the Michigan Wolverines. Buckeye TV has your post-game report on this year's edition of The Game. Urban Meyer called this year's game against Michigan a classic, and that's exactly what it was. The number three Ohio State Buckeyes journeyed to Ann Arbor to take on the Michigan Wolverines and won in a 42-41 game that was still up for grabs going into the final minutes. Ohio State not only had bragging rights on the line, but also its national championship chances and its 23-game win streak. I also want to give uh, them credit. Uh, they, they got great players and uh, uh, great coaches. I mean, that was a battle and a uh, uh, great game, classic. Little guy, little freshman. You know, I seen he was getting mugged and pushed. I was just running out there just, you know, help him out as a leader. And some, some Michigan guy trying to, you know, trying to take my head off, so I ain't going to have that. Uh, throwing the ball, you know, we we uh, you know we didn't get the normal pressure. Uh. So you know, you got to bounce back for adversity things that happen like that, and believing in your teammates. And I understand. I told him uh, happened to me early in the season. He's got to bounce back from. After number four Auburn defeated number one and defending champs Alabama in the Iron Bowl, Ohio State became the likely candidate for the number two spot in the national championship. But before they go to Pasadena, Ohio State journeys to Indianapolis next week to take on the Michigan State Spartans in the Big Ten Championship. Until then, I'm Franz Ross for Buckeye TV. Much of what makes the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry so great is the intensity from the fans. Asia Gore talked to some Michigan student-athletes to gauge the fans' perspective for this storied rivalry. This letter is off limits the week of the big rivalry game against that team up north. But walking into the big house in Ann Arbor means there's no escaping the big blue M. This big game holds a special place in a lot of people's hearts, but the rivalry isn't just confined to these stadium walls. I think Ohio State, Michigan um, is just a rivalry that comes up in all the sports. And being a volleyball player, it's, it's fun watching another sport compete against um, a team that we like to beat as well. I think it definitely gives us more motivation to win because it's like this is about our team pride, like for our school, like win for Michigan always. And that motto was made clear at many points throughout the game as the Buckeyes and the Wolverines kept neck and neck. This rivalry was evidenced by players when a brawl ensued early in the game, resulting in the ejection of two Buckeyes and one Wolverine. 
And though the lead changed several times, one thing remained consistent throughout. I think every Michigan student has a little um, thing against them, but I mean, it's not like I hate them, but I mean, we want to beat them really bad, so that's what we're here to do. But the Buckeyes had something else in mind, taking this game 42-41. to For Buckeye TV, I'm Asia Gore. After number four Auburn defeated number one ranked Alabama in what may be the game of the year, Ohio State became the likely candidate to face off against Florida State in the BCS National Championship. But I wouldn't book your plane ticket to LAX just yet. For the second time since 1943, there are two teams who have finished with undefeated records in Big Ten play. Those teams are the number two ranked Ohio State Buckeyes and number 10 ranked Michigan State Spartans. Now the Spartans are no small obstacle. They have one of the top defenses in the country, ranking fourth nationally in points allowed per game and first in yards allowed per game. Michigan State also has six players that have made first team all Big Ten defense. In his Monday press conference, Coach Urban Meyer discussed the Buckeyes' upcoming opponents in this Saturday's Big Ten Championship in Lucas Oil Stadium. Uh, as fine a defense as there is in America, uh, very good players, excellent scheme, well coached. I have not studied their offense a lot. That's usually on Tuesday. I listen to our coaches, and I just look at statistically what that quarterback and the running back and those guys have done. It's, it's uh, from day one, uh, game one to game 11. There's most approved offense, maybe certainly in the Big Ten, maybe one of the most approved in America. There are a lot of ingredients that go into making a national championship game exciting. An undefeated Buckeye team, a trip to California, you name it. But now fans can submit their own tailgate recipes to a cooking competition for a chance to see the big game in person. Cook Off Before Kickoff is sponsored by Sam's Club and is sending one winner and their guest of choice to Pasadena to see the Buckeyes play in January. The prize package includes round-trip airfare, two tickets to the game, $1,000 in cash, and a tailgating prize pack. Now let's take a look at your weekly weather forecast. On Friday, we have a chance of snow and temperatures in the mid-30s. Things will clear up on Saturday with a partly cloudy skies and temperatures in the high 20s. And on Sunday, we've got a chance of snow and temperatures in the low 30s. On Monday, temperatures will increase slightly to the mid-30s with some fog rolling in. Thanks for tuning in for our last Buckeye News Now this semester. This is also my last Buckeye News Now here at Buckeye TV. I'd just like to thank all of our viewers for watching and all the people that I had the pleasure of working with. I'm Asia Gore. <laughs> Stay tuned for us next semester. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Franz Ross, and for Alice Bacani, thanks for watching. <laughs>